Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. I'm Brian Stewart and we're looking at Social Studies Book 3, Lesson 12 today. And Lesson 12, we're talking about countries and trade goods. This is a little bit of a difficult subject, but it's an interesting subject. How do countries trade goods with each other? In this unit, you will discover how countries trade and why countries specialize in certain goods or services. Okay, let's start with the vocabulary. The first word is trade. We saw that in the introduction to this lesson. Trade. What does trade mean? Well, trade it very simply means you have something I want and I have something you want. So if the items are similar in value, we can just trade, right? If you have two gumballs and I have one lollipop and you don't really want the gumballs but you want my lollipop and I want your gum, I don't really want my lollipop, we can trade. I give you a lollipop, you give me the gumballs. Good trade, right? That's trade. To, and, but on a bigger scale, right? To trade means to buy and sell goods and services. So think about much bigger scale, a, a very large scale, like a country making all sorts of goods and services. We talked about goods and services in a previous lesson. But a country offers or makes all types of goods and services. Another country might want those goods and services. Of course, they produce their own goods and services that the other country might want. So they trade these things with each other. And that's what we mean by trade. Okay. Barter. Barter is a type of trading, but barter means that you trade something without money. Now, usually, you know, I gave the example of the lollipop and the gumballs. That is an example of bartering because no money is involved. We're just trading, but we don't worry about money. However, what is the real cost of the two gumballs and the lollipop? Are they really equal? Maybe not. But to make it equal, we might say, well, the lollipop is worth 25 cents and the two gumballs, they're worth 20 cents. So there's a difference of five cents. But that might not mean anything to you and I. We don't care. It's just five cents. But for countries that are trading goods and services, they do care about how much exactly their goods or, or services are worth. So they will assign money to that and money will be used for the trade. But if it's not important or you think the items are similar value, then you can just trade and that's called barter. A long time ago, uh, before people really depended on money, they just used barter. They would trade a donkey for some wheat, right? And they would kind of figure out how much the donkey is worth in terms of wheat and they would barter with each other. So barter is a type of trade but barter does not use money. Okay. Whew. Specialize. What are you good at? Are you good at doing something? Maybe you have a talent for making a good or doing some kind of service. If you focus your talents and develop your skills in doing that thing, then you are specializing in that thing. Now, it's very common that we use the word in after specialize. You specialize in something. And specialize to choose and focus on one kind of crop or product, but it also means to specialize on a certain type of skill. If you're very good with computers and you like you learn how to code computers. You might specialize in computer programming. That is your specialty. Specialty is a noun. What is your specialty? Specialty. Specialty, which is a noun. And you could say, my specialty is programming computers. Okay? His specialty is uh, practicing law for example, or a doctor specializes in medicine. Farmers might specialize in growing one type of crop 
or plant. Some farmers might specialize in growing corn. Some farmers might specialize in growing wheat because they learn that plant, they learn all about it, and they devote all their efforts to it so they can specialize in that certain plant or in that certain field. So, what will you specialize in when you get older? Okay. Rubber. That's an interesting picture for rubber. Of course, rubber, if you have a small ball that you can push and you can bounce and it bounces off the floor, the ball is probably made out of rubber. The bottom of your shoes, if you have tennis shoes, might be rubber. It might be a, a more high-tech uh, material nowadays, but rubber is used for a lot of different things. The tires on your car, your family's car, those are made of rubber. Because rubber, what is rubber? It's a stretchy material. What does stretchy mean? Stretchy means you can stretch it, right? If you pull it on either side, it moves a little bit. You have some uh, flexibility. So it's a stretchy material that is used to make things like tires and boots. That's another good example. Do you have a pair of rain boots? They are made of rubber, right? They protect your feet from the rain. So that's rubber. Next, we have wheat. I mentioned this before. Wheat is a grain that's, very, that's grown in a lot of countries, and it's a grain used for making flour. So if you like pancakes, you are eating wheat that has been ground into a white powder we call flour. Sometimes it's white, sometimes it's brown. Depends on how they, how they make it. But it's, uh, the wheat is grown in the fields. Very similar to rice, right? Rice is another food that we eat. And by the way, wheat, rice, corn, we call these things staples because they are the basic food for many people around the world. They're like a staple food. Uh, rice, wheat, corn, uh, many other types of food that farmers will grow, we call those the staples, right? Because they kind of form the base, the basis of a uh, diet for people around the world. Okay. Port. What is a port? Well, you've heard of airport, right? An airport is where airplanes come and fly. That's where the airports gather, right? They, they land there and they take off there. But there's also a similar place for ships. And in fact, port is a much older word than airport, right? Ports have been around for thousands of years. For as long as human beings have made ships and they carry goods by ship to a certain place, that place that becomes convenient for the ships to come in and to stay and then to leave, that place is called a port. And, a port, and cities and towns and villages grow up around it. Well, villages, towns, and cities will grow from ports because they become very busy places for human activity. So a port is a city, town, or other place where ships can enter and leave. It's usually a natural, uh, nice area for ships. Deep water, it's protected from big waves. These places become ports. San Francisco is an important port in America. Uh, there's another important port at Incheon, right? That's an important port as well. So um, basically, it's just a place for ships to come in and leave. And like I said, port has been around for such a long time that when the invention of airplanes came to be, they thought, well, what should we call the place where airplanes come and leave? Well, let's call it an airport, okay? So they used an old word for a new technology. And that happens a lot. Okay, so that's port. Dollar. Dollar is the name of money used in the United States, but also many other countries as well. Other countries also use dollars. Um, so it's not just the United States. Other countries like Australia, they use the dollar. Canada uses a dollar. And many other countries also use dollars as the name of their money. And the U United States currency, though, is used very commonly around the world because it's kind of like a standard now. So many people will convert uh, their national currency into dollars and then maybe go to another country and use the dollars there. It's very useful if you travel or for trade. Okay, those are our vocabulary words for today.
Okay, let's go over the two main ideas in this lesson. The first idea is the idea about trading with other countries. And I talked about this a little bit before. Countries will trade with each other. Some country might have certain goods and services. Another country might have different goods and services. So they want to trade with each other. So let's take a look at some examples of trade. First of all, over on the left side, on the bottom, we see the United States. And this is a world map, right? We can see most of the countries in the world on this map. Way over on the left, uh, we see the United States and the arrow pointing to it. And it says the United States trades wheat with other countries. Why does the United States trade wheat? Because farmers in the United States specialize. Remember, they specialize, they focus their efforts in growing wheat. In the United States, especially in the middle part of the United States, very wide, very wide and flat land. There's a lot of farming land. And if you go there, you can see huge farms as far as you can see. And farmers will grow wheat. Of course, they also grow corn. Corn is very common in the Midwest. And we call it the Midwest or the middle of the country. It's a very uh, a lot of agriculture, a lot of farming goes on in the middle of the United States. Wheat is a traditional crop that uh, Western people will grow. So they have specialized in growing wheat. So the United States has a lot of wheat and they have a lot of land to grow wheat. Now, down here in Central America, Costa Rica, which is way, right down there, right? The arrow is pointing to it. Costa Rica in Central America, it's very hot and humid. They don't have snow, but it's very good uh, for growing many other types of crops like bananas. Costa Rica trades bananas with other countries. Their climate, hot and humid, and it's, they live there, most of their land is like jungle. Banana trees grow very well there. So do coconut trees and mango trees, right? So they can grow a lot of fruit. It's never winter, so they can grow fruit all year long. So Costa Rica trades bananas with other countries. Farmers in Costa Rica specialize in growing bananas because of their climate and because of the environment in Costa Rica. Now, way over on the other side of the world, way over here in Malaysia, and Malaysia is an interesting country because it's here, and, but it's also here, right? It, the country is like split. It's like two parts, right? So it's interesting. Uh, Malaysia trades rubber. Now, uh, Malaysia is also in a hot and humid climate, and they, there's a lot of jungle there, but in their jungle, they have rubber trees. And that's a very important discovery, right? They have these trees that, that will, you can get rubber from them. And so they specialize in growing rubber. Farmers in Malaysia specialize in growing rubber. This is very important in World War II because many countries in Europe needed rubber. So they would go to these countries here and try to get rubber, trade for rubber because rubber was very important for tires and other machinery that they were using in World War II. So that's very interesting. Some countries might have certain resources that other countries want because you can't really grow rubber in Europe. The climate's not good for that. Okay. So European countries and of course other countries nowadays will trade with Malaysia to get rubber. So as we can see, people or countries cannot always get what they need. They don't live in the right place, right? Uh, their environment doesn't support growing wheat, or maybe their environment doesn't support growing bananas or rubber. So they can get what they want or they need by trading, right? So if America needs rubber, they will trade with Malaysia. America has wheat, Malaysia doesn't grow a lot of wheat, so they can trade. Wheat goes to Malaysia, rubber comes back to the United States. And that's trade. That's very similar to this picture here, international trade. And I use the example of America and Malaysia, but of course every country does it. Two very important trading partners in the world today are America and China. China produces a lot of goods. Uh, 
China can produce goods cheaply because the wages, the the amount of money that factory workers make, is not high. So they can produce goods for a little money. In America, the wages are very high, so it's expensive to produce goods in factories in America. So America doesn't want to buy expensive goods that are made in America. They would prefer to buy cheap goods from China. So they might.、Uh, Import those goods. Now here we have a couple of important words: import and export. So, import were importing goods. Import means to buy goods or services from sellers in other countries. So, if you're in America and you want a good, but it's too expensive in America, or maybe it's not available in America, they don't make it there, then you might. Want to buy it from another country, but it, that good has to be imported, sent from one country to another country for selling in that country. So China will import goods. Well, I'm sorry, China will export goods. I'm sorry about that. Export. So China exports and America imports. Okay, that's a little confusing, right? So America will import because they're receiving the good. China is exporting because they are sending the good. So think about it this way: import is similar to receive, or I'll make it simple. Import is similar to get. Export is similar to. I, I'm going to say give, but it's not really give. Maybe send is better. You don't really give it. If you give it, you don't get any money for it. But you're sending it. You're giving it to another country. That is exporting. If you're importing, you're getting it. You're receiving it. That's import. So import, export. Okay, very simple. So import means to buy goods or services from sellers in other countries, and export means to sell goods, give or send. Goods to, or services to people in another country. Okay, so I try to keep it simple. Import is like get, export is like give. But of course, give don't don't say give exactly because give is just no money. You're just giving it. You're a nice person. You just give it. They don't just give it. <laughs> they sell it or they send it to another person for money. Okay, but it's similar to give. Okay. Now it's time for the reading. So let's do the reading, and as usual, read along with me either out loud or in your mind. Practice the pronunciation, and let's focus on the words that we learned. Are you ready? Let's begin. Goods from farms and factories move all over the world. This is because all countries trade and barter with each other to get things. Which they do not have. For example, the U.S. specializes in growing wheat, but it does not have enough rubber. Malaysia specializes in rubber, but it does not have enough wheat. Farmers in the U.S. sell their wheat to the customers. In Malaysia, sell. You could also say export, right? Because they're selling, or they're giving, or they're sending their wheat. Farmers in Malaysia sell their rubber to the customers in the U.S. Okay. Now, what's the opposite? The opposite would be、uh, farmers in the U.S. import or buy rubber. From Malaysia, that would be the opposite. Okay, good. The two countries depend on each other for these goods, and that's important. Depend on someone. We didn't talk about that in the vocabulary, but that's a very important word. When you support somebody, you are they depend on you, right? And we all depend on each other. We can't produce everything we need by ourselves. That would be a very difficult life. So we depend on other people to produce the goods and the services that we need to live a happy, successful life. So we depend on each other. Very important idea. Goods are shipped to ports in the countries where they are bought and sold by people. 
Every year, the U.S. spends millions of dollars trading for goods that it needs for its people to live happy and healthy lives. The same is true for other countries like Malaysia. Okay, that's our reading for this lesson. Let's take a look at how the reading is organized. And of course, we go over many different reading skills. In this case, we have cause and effect. So there's a cause, there's a situation that results in some effect, right? A situation produces an effect. So that's what we have here. For example, we have two causes on the left side and the, the effects from those causes are on the right side and they're connected by the arrow. So what is the cause? What is the condition first? The first one is the U.S. does not have enough what? In the reading, we saw that the U.S. does not have, you know, they grow a lot of wheat, they specialize in growing wheat, but they don't have enough of what? They don't have enough of rubber, right? And rubber is needed to make tires and boots and other parts for machines that are flexible. So the U.S. does not have enough rubber. So that's the cause. What did they do? What is the effect of that? What results from that condition? The result is that people in the U.S. beep rubber from farmers in Malaysia. Now, the reading didn't specifically say this, but we can think about what were the words we learned and what was one of the things that I highlighted in the ideas for this lesson. Do you remember that chart that we looked at, import and export? Ah, we need a word from that chart to fill in the blank here. So people in the U.S., they, they buy, they get, what's another word for get that I went over? Import, right. Okay, so people in the U.S. import, I know it didn't say it in the reading, but we have to put the ideas together, right? So people in the U.S. import rubber from farmers in Malaysia. You could also say buy, of course, buy. People in the U.S. buy rubber from farmers in Malaysia because Malaysia beep in rubber. Remember we talked about uh, Malaysia has jungle. They have a lot of rubber trees. So their farmers focus their efforts on growing rubber. That means they specialize in rubber. So they specialize, specialize, they specialize in rubber. Good. So that's one cause. U.S. doesn't have enough rubber, so they import rubber from farmers in Malaysia because Malaysia, oh, sorry, specializes, oops, <laughs> specializes in rubber. Remember, Malaysia is a singular noun. It's singular, singular, so we must put an S on the verb. Singular noun, S on the verb. Not always, but most of the time, okay? So, Malaysia specializes in rubber. Good. Next one, Malaysia does not have enough. So Malaysia has a lot of rubber, but they don't have enough what? Remember from the reading, it said Malaysia does not have enough wheat. So that's the cause, we, or that's the condition that creates an effect. So it's a cause. Malaysia does not have enough wheat. So what is the result of that situation? The result of that situation, the effect is People in Malaysia, beep, wheat. Well, of course, that's the same as above, right? It's, it's parallel. It's the same idea. So we put import here, import. So they will import wheat from farmers in the U.S. Of course, you can also say buy, buy. So they buy wheat from farmers. They import wheat from farmers in the U.S. because the U.S., what? The U.S., again, we think of the U.S., even though the United States has many states, we think of it as one country, so it's a singular noun. We say it specializes, specializes. We need the S, right? Because again, the U.S., yes, I know it's, it's the United States. There are 50 states, but it's one country, so we think of it as a singular noun. So, the United States specializes, not specialize, specializes in growing wheat. 
Okay, so that's the cause and that's the effect. And again, of course, we talked about import or buy. Now, the opposite, remember, of import or buy is export. So another sentence we could make about this situation is that people in Malaysia export rubber to the U.S. and farmers in the U.S. export wheat to Malaysia, right? So import and export are opposites, right? And they're very closely related words. Okay, well, that's very interesting. I know this subject is a little uh, difficult, right? But it's uh, interesting to think about how do you get the goods and maybe services that you need for your life. Look around your room. What things were, were made in your home country? Maybe there are many things in your room that were uh, imported from other countries. And maybe, you, you, of course, you can go down the store and buy them, or your mom or your dad can uh, order them online and they come to your house. But the whole world is specializing in different things. And people everywhere have certain abilities and certain talents, so they will specialize in making the things that they're good at and then they can sell them all around the world. So think about that. When you grow up, maybe you will specialize in producing some type of good or in providing some type of service and you can sell those things to anybody in the world. And that's all about import and export trade. Okay, interesting lesson today. I hope you learned a lot. Some interesting words. I hope they weren't too difficult for you. So, but interesting nonetheless. Thanks for studying with me and we'll see you in the next lesson. Take care.